everyone. My name is Della Phillips. I'm an artist as well as I'm known as the Bicycle Lady. How you doing today? I'm doing great. Today I wanted to work more on values and how to render shapes in a 3D format. Now I have been working with uh, the various geometric forms as you can see from the sheet I posted. I did change it a bit with this if you want an updated sheet, let me know and I'll repost it with the update. So you'd have the four-sided pyramid and the three-sided, as well as the cones and everything. What I normally do is I take some time in the morning and I will have maybe a YouTube on or something else. I'm watching like the news and I will shade. Now, I do set up at times my various geometric wood shapes that I had that I showed you before and shine a light on it. It's in my three-sided setup box. Maybe sometime I'll show that to you. And that way I can see the different shadows as well as there's some things you can see online. And I, beginning I was using that. So in the morning I do two of each and then the evening I do two of each. And here's another one I finished up. Today, as I said, I wanted to do something different, but still practice this. And I've already done my morning, and I started doing this. But I'm going to interrupt that practice and finish it up a little bit later. Let's just do a drawing. Uh -huh. Let's do something that's different. It has a different type of surface. And a potato is a good example, which I had in my kitchen. And... So I put it in the setup box, got some good lighting, but I thought maybe it might be best to do a picture first and then do uh, one of the potatoes because the potatoes I have are these dark red skin ones. And I found this picture on Pixabay. So that's what I'm going to draw today. And I printed it out on a full sheet of paper. And this looks to be a russet, maybe an Idaho baker, uh, definitely a russet and that sprouted. It makes it more interesting. And I then also did it in black and white. Sometimes if you have trouble seeing the values, you can refer to the black and white. And that's the reason why pictures can be helpful. And once you get used to seeing the values, even with the different hues and tones of those hues, Working from both pictures and from real life really can help that. So I'm going to be mixing it up as well with various items. Both uh, something that's a little rougher texture than this. Maybe something super smooth and reflective. We'll see. Well, let's get started, okay? So I'm going to put this to the side here. Hopefully you'll be able to see it still. And if not, you can find this on Pixabay. I'll see if I can find the reference. Now, the pencils I have, I'm using up, which is the credit color basically here. I still have my 600 news. And I'm going to be drawing in the shapes, the two-dimensional shapes to help me with this, and then work towards shading. Let me address something I've had a question about from some people, the erasers. I love the Vanish erasers, especially when I use it with color pencils, even watercolor pencils. Depending, even after you activate the watercolor pencils. Now, ink tense is not watercolor pencils. So those, that's ink, water-soluble ink. But regular watercolor pencils, I've even been able to lift a fair percentage after it was activated with this eraser. And supposedly it's formulated for that. That's the reason why I love it so much. It is big and bulky, so sometimes it's good to have a stick eraser. And I've actually stockpiled some of these. This is the older Sanford uh, rub erase, rub off eraser. And I like that. They stopped making this quite some time ago, and I stashed up. I think I have like eight left. So I, it's, going, it's going down, but I still have it. I did find an alternative, and it's a hair softer than the Magic Erase, or Erase Off, from Stanford. But it's very, very close. It's just a bit different. I still like it a lot, and it is being made. 
Now there's been some rumor that this may get made again in the future. We'll wait and see. Until then, I have a good alternative as well. And of course, like most graphic artists, mono eraser. A small, precise mono eraser. Um, I don't think the TB will show up that well. Let me see. I mean the HB. Let's use a 2B. So on this picture, when I get ready to draw, what I see is basically a rectangle with part of the lips and a different radius of the lips here. And then we can work on uh, a little bit of a cylinder-like projections, round it over. And I believe that's going to be the basic shape I'm going to be looking for. So, and with this here, if I use the pencil, it will be maybe two-thirds as thick as it is long. So let's make, see if we can get the proportion halfway decent, too. So I'm going to draw a box. I hope you can see that. Right there. And then, so it's approximately that length, and I want to go about two-thirds. So we're looking at maybe about here. So let me draw another line there. And complete the box. Now, of course, it's not going to be flat here. We'll take care of that later. Then, on this box, as you can see, it comes up here to a little past the middle and does drop sloping down. So I'm going to take out a triangle there. And we have a little bit of a slope, a rounding slope here. And then... Is that perfectly center? Not exactly. So I want to do an ellipse, but I want to do it slightly lopsided. So, and it needs to go out a little further. Let's take it out there. And, you know, turn your paper. Now, I mean, I get this super reflective, hyper-realistic re to exactly how this uh, potato is looking. But as long as I get it fairly close, I'm happy with it. And I'm not looking for super realistic. But I want it to be realistic appearing. So, I've got a couple lines here I'm going to dress up a little bit. And I like that shape. I think that's well reflected here. And it does come in a bit here, but not quite so far up. So, well, let's go for the other part. And the other part goes from this line, a little steeper slope than that. So I'm going to put that in. And this here is a little higher up about here. Is where that ellipse is. Maybe a little further down this way. Okay, now I hope you can see that. And now I want to uh, dress up this here to where we have a divot. There we go. Now, I'm fairly happy with that. So what I'm going to do is, normally I wouldn't do this, I would just let the shading show. I want to make sure you can see this, I'm going to put it in darker. But normally, if you use value, you don't want to have a dark line around everything. But since we're doing this on the video, I'm doing that because that's the line I want to, 
as my outline of my potato. Uh, if you do the outline, the heavy line, really you need to lighten it up as you shade. But you won't be able to see it on this camera. In most cameras you don't. So that's the reason why I did it darker. There we go. Now, let's start getting into the fun stuff. This is the HB. I think I'll leave that to the side. Here's the 4B. What we can look at is we have a dark spot there. It's right off there, about like that. And we can shade that in. And then we have it where it comes up, and this is coming out slightly. Let's use. Sometimes I grab it and use it like a, a pencil. Other times I like to grab it this way and use the eraser. And it's like it's trying to do something there, but not. And there's a little knock. And now we have this. It's a little bit bigger. And that comes up here, and we have an oval. You can see here on the picture, there's an oval there. So let me put that in. Huh. Popping. And that appears to be there. Another round here. And then we have a lump and a little finger sticking up, kind of like. And that will take some shading. And a dark spot here. That's a dark spot up there. Have some light shading here. This looks like this is back from it. So that's a little bit of light shading there. And definitely some shading here. So, and I think it is not liking that up just a touch. Seems to be a little bit there. A little darker there. Now we can always check that. And we can see, see that there, the point there, and how this is going off a bit there. Okay. All right. Now, we can look at this end. And it appears to me with this, we actually have a lot going on. And it's not exactly on the surface here, it's in a bit. So I'm going to bring this in. I think that's a little bit too far. Let's see. It's about there. I believe we have a little. Icon out there, and then one that comes up here and rounds off there. Another one that's there that comes up this way. Another one, that looks like it's undulating, and the final one, I got that all messed up, 
And that's what the erasers are for. Let's get. It probably wouldn't matter that much. But it matters to me. That's a round area. I was trying to freehand contour when I said I was going to be doing shapes. Hmm. Okay, now. That looks like that's a little better. This here looks like this is like a bit of a box, and then we have another box heading out here. So that has a heavy. This is fairly heavy, but shading. There's some shading there. Definitely here. Let's get that back here so we can do it. And then we got a surface. You know how it's rough. So now that we have this eye, and it's about after this, about stay here. But first, let's put in this cut mark. Because this will help anchor where I want to put the eye. And there's the eye. Now it's indented a bit. So, and then we have some scuffies. I spent all day doing all the scuff marks. But we have another cut here. We want to show that. And. That. And here's a couple here. One's a, a good size scrape. It happened when they were digging it out. And then there's another one there. Okay. And then we have the shadow. Which really, remember shadow diffuse out. And what I need here. This is a, just a quick exercise, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not going to get it super realistic, because that takes me several hours, actually, if I get really into doing that. Which I may do, but I don't think you'll want to stay with me on camera for all that. So here we're going to have some aspect of a spear going on. Like if you're shading just this part of a spear, and it does appear like the light is like this. 
So. Get some gradation going on there. radiates out and becomes a little bit more light. Super dark in there. This is where the day gets out the lighter. So we're going to have some reflection back up here. That's what I'm seeing. Right. I think I'll use a little bit of HB here to help smooth some more out. So keep it a little bit lighter. Okay, so this is a quick sketch. I'm starting to get in some of the tunnel that I can see. And if you see something different, let me know. Uh, overall, I think that's pretty good for the amount of time spent. And as you can see here, it is a bit more dark. Here, as you can see here, develop that. So, I believe I may be getting to the point of saying this as a sketch and not a finished drawing is getting close to being. Pretty well worked. And okay. See, there is a light area there lost a little bit of it so I can bring it back. Okay, that's my rendering. Quick rendering of this potato that I sprouted. Not too bad. Hi everyone, I want to jump back in. This is Della, and uh, as you see, this is a picture of the potato from Pixabay. This is what we did together in a quick sketch form. And even so, it was over 20 minutes doing this. Well, I decided 
I wasn't going to shortchange you. Now I wanted to practice some more and maybe I do a little more refined drawing and shading practice. So I did that with the same reference and this is what I came up with. Now this is not super high for realistic. It just gives you a little more of a finished form showing some of the subtle shading and some of the uh, roots that's it's coming out. And if I want to get even more detail and more finished on this, I could spend at least two hours or more uh, being very slow and getting every, every detail. However, it reminds me of a quote some time ago I heard that the value of art is what the artist sees and what the artist includes in their representation. That gives its mystery and its interest. I think this is quite good from my perspective. And uh, let me know what you think. Until next time, you have a great day. And if you find this video enjoyable, entertaining, please click on that thumbs up icon. That lets YouTube know you like this type of content as well as subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Bye for now.